Derek England was part of the Golden Knights team that made it to the Stanley Cup final in its inaugural season. We sat down with the now retired defenseman who still works for the Golden Knights in an ambassador type role. Well, first off, Derek, what is your role with the Golden Knights? I'm curious what your perspective is on it. Uh, a lot of a lot of community stuff. Um, run the alumni, learn to play with the little kids, kind of a little bit of everything. It started with you know, three or four things that we were going to kind of thing. And, uh, you know, George or people upstairs working would just ask you. And, you know, it's good to keep busy. And you're talking about George McPhee. Yes. Whose position currently is president. He yes. continued to rise over the years in this organization. Yes, he's, he's an amazing, awesome guy. Yeah, well, tell so, me about him and yeah, his influence uh, in making this team we're talking about. You know, what he's done with this team, it still blows my mind how some of the trades they made and, and everything around the expansion draft, it, just how they brought that team together was amazing. And every year you seem like it's, okay, it's going to level out here and every, go into um, free agency or trades. And it's just, wow, how did, how did they pull it off? And it's, it's exciting to see as a, just as a hockey fan, but. Um, um, what blows your mind about it? Yeah, you know, bringing in guys like Jack Eichel or Petra Angelo, you know, these big, Everyone says that he's chasing all the big names. No, they're making a team that's competitive every year. And, you know, I think we got a taste of the finals the first year. And unfortunately, we lost. But um, you get that taste and you want, want to get there again. And they've done nothing but uh, gave this team opportunities to every single year to, to win the Cup. Now, how closely do you watch the games? Do you watch every game? Uh, if I go to a game, it's hard to. Uh, there's a lot of yeah, some another job thing, uh, ambassador around the the suites and the the sponsors. So, it's uh, it's hard when you're doing that stuff to actually watch. Uh, you know, if you see a goal, you pause this conversation and stuff like that and watch. But um, if I have none of that going on, I like to go home and I actually get to watch the game uh, at, on TV and it just makes it a little bit easier. But it's you know, I've met uh, a lot of amazing people that I'm friends with now that uh, I wouldn't, if I didn't have the job, I, I wouldn't have met with uh, through sponsors and suite holders and stuff like that. So um, a lot of them have come to our alumni golf tournament uh, that was just on Tuesday. So you, you build those relationships and it's, uh, you know, everyone knows Vegas is a very small, big city. So um, the relationships you make and is amazing. And it's, you know, it's, it's tough to, to, watch the actual game at, at the game but I would imagine but you still get the atmosphere the feeling and, uh, and the excitement when you're there when you are able to watch a game do you share your observations with the players no I, I'm I'm kind of upstairs the business side more um, you know that's the coaches stuff and um, have you been told not to no no nothing like that I you know I still when I run into the guys we, we you know talk and see how things are going stuff like that but uh, you know, I think, I, I feel like when I was a player, you always talked hockey. So, you know, you run into the guys and stuff like that. And it's more about how life is and the family's doing and stuff like that. And just keep it, uh, keep it just like, just, just buddies, you know. So uh, I try to stay out of the hockey stuff and, and let the guys that uh, are in the, in the locker room take care of that. Well, then if you were to give them any advice for the Stanley Cup final, being that you played with some of these guys in the last Stanley Cup final that the Golden Knights were in, what would that advice be? Oh, just enjoy the moment. Um, you know, one I think they've been playing it one game at a time, uh, all, all, all playoffs along, and, and that's the biggest thing from my takeaway from the, the first year is, you know, we got that first game, and it was almost like everyone's like, oh, it's Vegas' Cup now, they're gonna win, and, and then as soon as everyone started hearing that, it's like tighten the stick a little bit, and. And you're worrying too far ahead instead of just that next game. And um, that would probably be the biggest thing I'd tell them. Because enjoying the moment, that seems so difficult when it's work and it's high pressure work. It is. And, and I think if you can, you know, after a game, win or lose, enjoy that moment or dwell on it if you lose a game. But the next morning, it's a new day. And, and then you worry about the next one and don't get too far ahead. And um, you know, you still got to enjoy it. You, you know, the atmosphere around the city is electric and it always has been with the Knights. And um, now you're in the finals again and it's, it's just going to ramp up even more. What did you think of the team's decision not to touch the Campbell Bowl in I the kinda, Western Conference I, final? Because it's I, the opposite of yeah, what you did in yeah. 2018. Well, we, we you know, we, we had no captain the, the first year and um, oh, that's there right. was only... 
think Flurry was the only guy that has been to the finals. And so, I, you know, we all, all the leadership guys kind of talked and a lot of guys went to Flower and, you know, just what do you think? And, and he didn't touch it the first time in, in Pittsburgh and they lost and then they touched it, they won. So, you know, we wanted to try to keep his streak going and, and try to win. He was, uh, you know, the backbone of the team that year. And um, so we touched it and, you know, at the end of the day, I superstition, but uh, I guess hockey guys are pretty superstitious. So would um, you take it back? Would you go back and not touch it? No, I, I don't think that played any factor in the outcome. You, you know, we came out strong and um, won that first game. But, uh, you know, we we're playing a really good hockey team that uh, that beat us, uh, unfortunately, four straight. But, um, you know, it was still the most magical season of my, my career. And, um, you know, it, it sucks he didn't get a win. But uh, just making him there, I played in Pittsburgh for for four years and it seemed like every year they were handing us the cup and I never made it past the second round. So um, it's hard to get there and you got to embrace that and just, like I said, take it one game at a time. Back to Marc-Andre Fleury. My, how goaltending has changed over the years for this team. And in this season in particular, what have you thought as you've seen the team use five different goaltenders this season? Yeah, just since All-Star break too. It's It's been crazy. Um, you know, bringing in Jonathan Quick was turned out to be brilliant because uh, other guy Aiden got hit, hurt and and all that so it was it was brilliant but it seems like it's how the team plays defensively any goalie that gets in there obviously they have to be good um, and make those saves at key moments but the way they play really helps the goaltender out they don't give a lot of, a lot of second opportunities um, up they clear rebounds um, so the goalie can really focus on that one shot and he knows that the guys are clearing the puck but um, you know, you know, when Brasua started, he was phenomenal. Unfortunately, he got hurt, and you know, Aiden came in and hasn't missed a beat. He's been phenomenal uh, since he got in there, and um, you know, I, hopefully, it continues for the, the finals. What makes this team special, in your opinion? Uh, I, I just think the depth. Um, you know, the guys that they brought in have really complemented um, the lines. You, you know, you go before the 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 trade deadline and. You had that high-end skill, and uh, you know the fourth line's been phenomenal all season long. But just the little smaller pieces, Barbashev and guys like that, that have really done been impactful for uh, you know Eichel and Marchi playing with him. You know they add that extra element that uh, not that the other guys aren't doing it, but kind of that grind aspect, to grind it out for them, to create a little bit more room for those guys to do what they're they're good at, and you know they. The depth. Uh, if one line's not going one night or has the hard matchup, the other guy, the other guys are coming and and uh, picking it up for them. So I think it's the depth is uh, huge for this team. I want to go back to that magical season that you were talking about, and I think perhaps one moment that everyone will remember the most in this city is when you gave that really profound and poignant speech following the one October shooting uh, at the very first game of the Golden Knights inaugural season, the very first game after uh, that shooting, very first home game, I should say. How often do you think about that moment? A lot, actually. I still have people, um, you know, that you meet that tell you how much it, it touched them or helped them through a tough time. And, you know, the whole team, the, the whole season, I think, helped. But um, so it gets brought to your attention a lot. And, you know, you'll see something around town my my wife keeps bringing up showing me things on her phone that'll come up and it's 58 everything like it's crazy how many times it comes up uh just, just two days ago i forget what it was maybe during the golf tournament something was 50 she's like there's another one there's another one like you know like so it's always coming up around her and she mentions it so it's you know i don't know if it's uh people looking down on us but um you know it's brought to your attention a lot more than you think Ooh, that gives me goosebumps, yeah, yeah, 58 being yeah. the number of people um, originally reported that had passed away. When you do see that and hear that from your wife, what kind of emotions does it give you? Same thing. It's almost chilling. Um, you know, it's such a tough time. The speech was, you know, the hardest thing I think I've done. I've played the hockey was easy, but getting up there to say a speech and, um, was, was very nervous, so it was tough, but um, it's one of those things that you'll never forget. 
Uh, last question, five years later, the Vegas Golden Knights are back in the Stanley Cup final. What's it going to take for them to win it this time? Oh, I think uh, the goaltending's got to be huge. Um, you know, they're going to get Bobrovsky. has been lights out since he's come in, so they got to match that. And then the depth, um, like I said, if the depth can keep coming, and I think we're, we're an extremely deep team that all four lines contribute. You, you know, you look at game six against Dallas, and I think our fourth line really set the tone. Um, they came out the first shift, dominated. They scored their second shift, and, and everyone jumped on and, and rode that, and they were phenomenal. It was a flawless game, I thought. You don't often hear people talking about the fourth line, right? Yeah, no, it's uh, the line's been phenomenal. You look at Will Carrier, he missed a big chunk of the season, and he puts up 16 goals on the fourth line. That's that's amazing. That's That goes to the hard work that he he's always working. He's always uh, doing extra, so... You know, and Wall and Kolzar are, are picking up right there too. So they put the Wall back with that line and they uh, led the way. Carrier being one of the original Golden Knights still on this team, what would it mean for you to see those guys get this Stanley Cup final? It would, it would be uh, amazing. You know, you well, like I said, we came up short the last time and uh, it was a lot of a lot of guys' first time in the, in the finals. And so that experience, I think, will, you know, help them out in the long run, the guys that, from the first year and then, Guys that they brought in, Petro, Quick, um, Barbashev, Stevenson, you Eichel. know, they have all those, the experience. And, you know, I think uh, Eichel hasn't been in the playoffs, right. but um, his excitement will, uh, I'm sure, turn to his play. So it's going to be amazing to see. And, uh, you know, I hope the guy's the best. Right. Eichel, very first playoffs ever, yeah. and he's in the Stanley Cup final. What a big deal. It is. Derek England, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me.